I have a few things to say before this video starts. Uh, first one is I just want to give a huge thank you to my ten plus dollar patrons because that is a lot of money that you are investing in me to make decent videos. So thank you so much for that. Uh, the second thing that I need to shout out is I have a bit shoot now, and I've uploaded most of my deleted videos, at least the ones that I think are decent, onto there because. I don't know, I liked a few of them, and I don't want them to be gone forever. I do have a second channel, but that's mainly for just in case this one gets shut down. So if you want to see uh, old videos that are deleted, go to the bit shoot. Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. So today, we're going to be making dinitrogen pentoxide, and this is the last precursor that we're going to need before I can start making the uh, most powerful explosives. Before we start, the only reason that this video is being made is because, like, for research purposes and just for proof of concept that I can do it and I show you how I do it. This is not meant to be recreated. Dinitrogen pentoxide is so dangerous, as you'll see later in this video, that I shouldn't even be working with it. But I took the proper safety measures. I know what I'm doing. So... Never recreate this at all under any circumstance. Now that that's out of the way, let's start the video. Okay, so the first method I was going to try for making the nitrogen pentoxide was going to be making N2O4, which I have the apparatus set up right here, and I'm going to be mixing it with uh, ozone. And when those mix, they create N2O5. So I try that method first. I set up my distillation, and I distill over the dinitrogen tetroxide. The only difficult part is condensing it and drying it. So I just have a calcium chloride trap, and I use a uh, dry ice bath to collect it, and I use a salt ice bath for uh, the condenser so that I can get a uh, high yield. After around one to two hours, I have well over 20 milliliters of nitrogen tetroxide, so that is plenty to move on. Okay, so here it is. It's uh, actually frozen because the dry ice is cold enough to hit its freezing point, so it's actually Quite nice. Also, I'm not wearing gloves because just like nitric acid, this is essentially anhydrous nitric acid. Uh, well, technically N2O5 is, but this is close enough. And I'm worried that it'll do the same thing to gloves. But yeah, it's frozen, so it should be pretty safe. Now, my setup is the ozone generator right there. I have it attached to an oxygen cylinder, so it's both dry and uh, pure. And I have it in the test tube like that, and I have some nitrogen tetroxide at the bottom of the test tube already, and I'm essentially just going to bubble the ozone through. I also have a fan blowing stuff away so that I don't breathe ozone or nitrogen dioxide, because neither of those are fun to breathe in. So here is a nice little time lapse that I got of me bubbling ozone through the nitrogen tetroxide, but uh, it actually ended up not working at all. So wasted my time, resources... Yeah, it wasn't very fun. I did get this oily stuff at the bottom of the test tube, which could have been uh, nitrogen pentoxide that absorbed water from the air and became nitric acid, but it also just e just as easily could have been nitrogen tetroxide absorbing water from the air because it does the same thing. I tried to flame test it, and I got white fumes, which shows that it's probably nitric acid. So some sort of reaction happened, I'm not too sure. In any case, it doesn't really matter because it didn't give me any sizable amount that I could even remotely work with. So I'm back multiple weeks later because I needed to order phosphorus pentoxide and I got some from Onyx Met or however you say it. And you know, it takes like two months to arrive if you live in the United States. So I'm not getting that anytime soon. So I ordered some from Chemsavers. I got myself 500 grams and now I can make some, or at least attempt to make some, nitrogen pentoxide. Now this method better work, because if it doesn't, I don't have any backup. So here, I bestow upon all of you my beautiful setup. Now, as you see here, I, uh, my little tube that's going to be condensing it, uh, you can see how it used to be an air condenser, but the top broke off, so I had to weld that back together, and then I had to bend it also by using flames. So I'm very impressed with myself that I was able to do that. One thing I would go back and change is that uh, not using the thermometer adapter because the dinitrogen pentoxide actually melted the stopper 
the one that's not supposed to melt. So, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Also, for the uh, condenser tube, I have a calcium chloride water trap at the end of it with that broken piece of glass that I kind of, you know, just attached. God, this setup is really dangerous, but hopefully it'll work. Before we start the synthesis, let me just complain about chemicals again. The phosphorus pentoxide is so hydroscopic, you can't even work with it, especially with humidity at 80% where I am. Much less, you know, get it to work, but uh, I'll figure it out. Okay, so now we're going to actually begin the synthesis. So, what I have is I weighed out 40 grams of my phosphorus pentoxide, and the other side is just nitric acid. Now, I weighed out 10 milliliters initially or 10 grams actually initially, and I was just going to, you know, no really specified amount. I was just going to add the phosphorus pentoxide till you know, it wasn't really reacting anymore. Then I would add a little more nitric acid, then add a little more phosphorus pentoxide. And I kept on doing that, and it actually ended up being a pretty good method. Besides the fact that the phosphorus pentoxide was sticking to everything and absorbing all the water from the air due to the humidity, the synthesis actually went by pretty well. So this is, what the, uh, this is what it looked like after the additions were done. You could see I used way too much phosphorus pentoxide, which isn't bad, I guess. It's just a little bit of a waste, but it's fine. It won't harm the process at all. Now, once I did this, I set up a hot water bath under it, and I'm going to heat it up to right around 40 degrees Celsius. That's going to be the mark that we're going to try to hit the entire time. Now, I do have the ozone generator also hooked up so that I can help push it through the system, but it ended up not working very well because the... Uh, the tube actually ended up leaking, and I got the, you know, the fumes everywhere, so I just closed it off and didn't really use it that much. However, it would be better to actually use it. So now that my dry ice bath is down to temperature and the hot plate is heating, now I'm just going to kind of supervise it to make sure everything's going okay. Also, I did put calcium chloride in the uh, little broken piece of glassware on the condenser thing, and I stuffed it up with cotton, so that should work perfectly fine for keeping the air out. You may not believe this, but it is actually working. As you can see in the condenser tube, look at that. Condensed dinitrogen pentoxide. I can't believe it's actually working. I should probably mention this, but the uh, reaction flask, as you can see, is very, very bubbly. And it nearly bubbled over into the condenser, so be wary of that. So I'm just letting it condense, and the point where I stop it is when it gets all clogged up. Because... The tube is actually too small and it ended up getting clogged up with crystals, so I had to stop it. So I would rather use a bigger tube than this small one that I was using. So I ran into a problem that I didn't exactly foresee. Now, yeah, making the N205 is hard, but getting it out is even harder. Now, I was trying to think of a way, and I was going to use a wooden stick. So to test if a wooden stick was compatible, I put it inside the atmosphere inside of the flask. It didn't even touch the liquid, and it turned it, and it instantly scarred it brown. So that's definitely not going to work, so I'm going to have to come up with something that can manage to scrape it out. So this is what I came up with. A wooden stick wrapped in Teflon tape. I'll take my Nobel Prize now. By the way, look at these beautiful crystals at the top. I just have to point that out before I ruin them by ripping them off. So after trying to poke them off and everything, the Teflon stick broke, part of the wood touched the N205, I heard little pops, and then I said, no, not doing that anymore. So it turns out I'm actually pretty stupid, because there are two sides to the tube. The first one's all clogged up, because the, you know, too many crystals built up. The other side, though, isn't, and I managed to pour them out. Look at that, I actually got pure, dry N205, just by doing it from the other side. Dinitrogen pentoxide versus red phosphorus. Whoa. Whoa. So the nitrogen pentoxide is completely stuck. I have no hope of getting it out. Can't scrape it out, can't hit it out, and I'm not going to break my glass tube. So I'm going to react it with stuff. However, you see how the glass at the top is broken? Yeah, I dropped it on accident. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I? So here's the reaction with isopropyl alcohol. You can see that it just poofs. It's very, very, very reactive. I dropped a few crystals into the uh, isopropyl alcohol bath also, and they actually detonated. So this stuff has to be, you have to be very careful because I'm using an isopropyl alcohol bath to cool it. 
Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, please consider subscribing. Now that I finally have N205, I can move on to the last step of making the most powerful primaries.